When it comes to EVE Online, every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Meta Show. I'm sorry we missed you last week. I don't know what my dog is barking at, but hopefully he shuts up so we can actually do the show here. Hi, everybody. I missed you so much. Today's September the 11th. I hate this day. Hold on a sec. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We are we are not getting your audio. Give me one second. This is bullshit. How is this happening? I don't know why we why you know what this is this is this is here's the problem. We didn't do the show last week. So nothing is set up properly. As we were like, saying, we hate September 11th. It says Jay, I love it. Here we go. We hate September 11th. Tell everybody why we hate September 11th, boss. Oh, yeah, September 11th sucks. I mean, obviously, it's the the we're gonna have to rip this fucking mandate off right at the start. Is shoot blues, tell the uh, You know, September 11th is my least favorite day of the year uh, for a variety of reasons involving uh, people very close to me. Uh, well, you guys know the deal. Anyway, the point is, it's September 11th, and uh, shoot blues, tell the uh, and we're you know we just will that that's basically all i've got i mean like there's nothing really to fucking say it doesn't get easier every year every year it fucking sneaks up on me and then it's like oh it's september 11th fuck and yep. then you're supposed to sort of act like everything is normal and peachy it's been what it's a palindrome of 2012 too so it's been nine years so it's 2021 september 11th but if you look at it funny it looks like 2012 and then there's trauma from that and anyway it just fucking sucks uh fucked up september 11th uh, I miss Valrad and I think about him every fucking day because he was my right hand man and he helped build this fucking empire and uh, we couldn't have done it without him. And it just sucks. It just fucking sucks. That's really all there is to say about it is fucked up September 11th and uh, we miss you, Sean. It is 20, 20 years since 9 11, 2001. It is nine years since 9 11, 12. Both of them had pretty big impacts on all of us. We are here with a live shot in front of the ZZ Rip. Vile Rat, Fraction Fortazar in 1DQ if you guys want to come join us out here. Oh, pausing and, and pivoting away. We missed you guys last week. Yeah. And I'm sorry. And I have I have a personal apology because we've been doing this show for almost two years. We're coming up on our third season in November. We are two months away. This is literally the first time we have canceled the show because of illness in two years. And why? Not because Brisk got COVID. Not because Brisk had a tummy ache. Brisk had a double ear infection. Who gets double ear infections in 2021? That's like a children's thing. Like, I used to get them when I was a kid. My kid would get them. But adults don't get them. And it's like I look it up, and I'm looking up ear infection symptoms and stuff, and, and all the stuff is for children, like parents. Here's how you tell if your kid has one. I'm like, I don't need to know. I need to know if I have one. And and it was it was one of the outer ones. It was the, the, the swimmer's ear style, and it was just my entire left ear closed up, and then my entire right ear closed up. I listened to the show in my right ear, so I couldn't even listen to the show. I couldn't wear headphones. I couldn't chew. My mouth hurt because everything was swollen and it was nasty. Anyway, that was the first and only time we have ever missed a show for illness. And coming so close to the last time we missed a show, I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I don't want you guys to miss the show. I know you hate it when we miss shows. And I don't want you thinking that because the war is over, somehow we're going to start slacking off, which is why we have all kinds of new stuff today. We've got cool frames around pictures, guys. That's right, we do. I have 
not only do I have one different camera angle, I have three different camera angles today. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff with buttons and things. It's pretty awesome. Now, what have we missed in the last two weeks? Well, let me tell you. The Drama Llama has been wandering around New Eden, and it has decided to adopt Brave, and it's sitting in their front yard right now. It's like the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. We have all kinds of stuff from Brave Newbies, our favorite new guy group. And there's not only drama that happened that was about the end of the war, there's drama that's happened this week. And we even have drama around the sale of the GE Tech Keepstar, which I don't think anybody thought was ever going to happen. So we're going to get to that here in our top story, which is right now. Today's top story. Let me get to, back to my normal picture. Today's top story is Brave. <laughs> because there's just so much stuff happening with Brave. There's so much, there were so many things that happened and came out on Reddit about Brave this week. And we love Dunk and his, his crew of restless mis misfits as they wander around the galaxy trying to figure out where they're going to live. And they're in Geminate now, and they just had a friendly reset with Horde. But we keep hearing all kinds of weird shit coming out of this alliance from the top. And then we get it from the number two guy, I guess. But then we don't know, oh, is the number two guy actually the number one guy? Is the number one guy charge? the number two? What's who's going in on? Charge? Is, is it sharded armor? Is it Dunk Eagle? So, right? um, sh should, I, should I get in here with a little sort of a, a preamble? Hop right in, and then we're going to go to to the leaks and stuff. Okay. Um, so, I want to get things straight, right? Like it, it's, there's been a lot of discussion about the brave things and I want to get to the point where I shit on test for thinking that they would be safe to come out of the penalty box and take swings at Dunk Dinkle over selling the, one of the keep stars, I forget it was GE or PZ or whatever. There's been, there's been transfers because the Imperium has a record of 15 years plus of always keeping our fucking word. We do not break our deals. Um, but before I get to that, I need to clarify a few things because uh, while we were away, uh, because Brisk uh, was imitating a six-year-old or whatever the appropriate age is for getting ear infections, I will probably then come down with an ear infection sympathetically in the next day. So I can't throw too many stones about you uh, having that because it might be me next. But um, there's been a lot of words coming out of Brave. Uh, and I think that it is cool and good that Dunk has taken over Brave. Uh, at least he appears to have taken over Brave. I don't know if they're going to do some of the things that you would expect, like purging their inactives or actually getting rid of the council system. And have, like, you know, for many years, Goonswarm has tried to be there for Brave. And instead, we just got sick of dealing with their bullshit. And we took everybody who was cool from Brave, uh, we believe, uh, in the form of Karma Fleet and their friends into our org. Uh, so what I'm about to say is I mean this more as a correction rather than rah, 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 I'm mad. Uh, Dunk has said in a few places that Goonswarm asked uh, Brave Newbies to flip sides during the war. This is, I've said, I've told the story a few times before about how I delivered a threat to Brave Newbies and that therefore I'm sort of honor bound to follow through with it. Uh, the threat was specifically to get out of the war. We do not, we did not invite Brave Newbies into the Imperium at no time. And we, we actually checked our diplomatic records. I had a, con a chat with Markle Chen and Marana about this before the show because I just wanted to make sure that there weren't any confusion or mixed messages. Uh, in no official communications did I or uh, authorized members of Corpse Diplo suggest that Brave Newbies flip sides very specifically. And I want people to understand this because unfortunately, some of the posturing around this narrative has been to the effect of, I was asked to flip sides and I would never flip sides and join the Imperium. And so we stood and fought and we were honored. But no, I told Dunk to get the fuck out of the war. I told him to take his people and go someplace else because I didn't want brave newbies on our side because they're busy trying to exterminate us. And two, uh, they would never say yes anyway. Now, I understand that there are some sensitivities about this, right? Because now that we have seen some of the things we're going to be talking about in a bit, like in the Pappy Snowden leaks about what it was really like inside of the uh, High Council of Pubbies or whatever, uh, I think it's pretty obvious that if Dunk had 
tried to just remove Brave from the war, uh, Shattered and Piggles and Villy and the rest of them would have turned on them because it's pretty clear from looking at the toxicity of the command layer of the uh, coalition formerly known as Pappy that it was a death pact and that if Dunk had actually removed Brave from the war, either Shattered armor would have flipped on him because he is attached to Pro God Legend's ass uh, or the rest of them would have turned on Brave and killed them or something like that. But I just want to make it very clear in all these communications that at no time has the Imperium asked brave newbies to flip sides during the war. We told them to leave the war to find some excuse to do anything other than line up behind sharded armor and Villy and Piggles and Elf Boy and suck their dicks. And so now when I move on to talk shit about Tess, I just want to I want to clarify that, right? Like, I think that if Brave has a hope in hell, it's under Dunk's management. Uh, I'm not saying that we're not going to uh, deliver on our threat, but you know, just when we're, we're having a communication about this, that's when I clarify that. And I think that's important because we're going to show here in a, in a second. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my main camera. We're going to show here in a uh, wrong camera. This is the main camera. We're going to go back and show here in a second a listing of of a uh, actually it's not even a listing. It's there was a post that was made by Dunk, a long post on the Brave forums, talking about the end of the war, what he knew, what he didn't know, what the group knew, what it didn't know. And the the best part is it was immediately followed by a similar version written by Shattered Armor that contradicts stuff that Dunk said. And then we get a Pappy Snowden leak later that contradicts it even more. And it's like, I don't even know who the hell knows what's going on here. It's just weird. So we're going to start out here. This is the beginning. This is the, the first. So, so Dunk puts this out. This was put out about a week ago or so, talking about the end of the war. And I pulled out a, a, some selected highlights of it because it's pretty funny. So the first part of the brave drama is Dunk didn't know. Apparently, Dunk just he just didn't know. He says, "Quote: Brave was never in the highest level coordination room of the duration of the war. I was able to talk with most of the leaders, but we weren't consulted in the planning in any serious way." Now we're going to see in just a couple minutes that that's not true, at least not for the ending. So we move on. He says. And this, is, this goes directly to what Minton just said. At the same time, Imperium leadership's reaching out to me directly about the war. I'm friendly with almost all of them. They want us out of the war. Correct. Accurate. Either by flipping. Wrong. Lies. Or simply backing out of the war. Yes. Or as I was asked, ease off the pedal and push your people in another direction. That is almost a direct That's quote from what Merkel Chen told That's not fucking flipping, Dunk. I'm flipping. sorry. Like I, I, like, I know that you want to look good in front of your dudes and say, I That's was asked to flipping. do something something bad and I held the line. But the reality is all I asked you to fucking do is get your dudes out of the goddamn war because I didn't want you to flip because I couldn't trust your people because they're howling about the extermination of my people, Right. Dunk, I believe, is kind of the good guy in this situation, but I just I got to clarify that if I issue a threat and I say something like that, I can't have people run around saying, oh, the Matani wanted me to join the Imperium. And I said, no, 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 please do not mischaracterize what we say. Uh, we will get cross about it uh, or, or do it. And then we'll be mad about it and then we'll have something to do. But you know, right. let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So the whole point is we didn't do that. We didn't do that. We never said flip because we don't want you guys to flip. We just want them to go away. So. I felt this was the wrong decision. This was my decision solely. Fine, whatever. Okay, that's great. Now, listen to this. He talks about why not flip. And I have, when I read this the first time, I kind of had to scrunch my nose up like, eh, this doesn't make any sense. So he says, forgetting all about who won, which is fair, it was about Brave's ability to work and negotiate in the post-war future. If it was seen that Brave was willing to flip on their coalition, we would never be seen as trustworthy by the rest of the game. Guess what? <laughs> they don't trust you anyway. The rest of the game doesn't trust you anyway. Not only do they not trust do not we not trust you. Your own allies don't trust you. Why do you think you guys weren't in the room? At least according to you guys. I mean, that's the thing. They already didn't trust you. So let's keep going. So... It would mark us as a group that could not be trusted in difficult matters. In my opinion, this was an unacceptable choice. As Eve is a game about relationships, and relationships are built on trust. If we flipped, we'd never be trusted again and permanently aligned with the Imperium. All right, first of all, one, not why is being them. permanently aligned with us that bad? Right? Because if there's one thing that you have seen throughout the history of EVE Online is that the Imperium, the CFC, whatever group we call ourselves at the time, 
We are your best friend and your worst enemy. We're never going to turn on you. We're never going to break anything. We're going to Rick roll your ass and all of us are never going to give you up. We're never going to let you down. We're never going to turn around and desert you. We are not going to do bad stuff to our allies. We don't do that. They do it to us like CO2 did, but we don't do it to them. So given the fact that you were just in a coalition filled with people who either treated you like the dumb little sister or were actively farming you for a decade, why would you suddenly think it's a bad thing to be aligned with the Imperium for the rest of time? Uh, it's not that bad a thing. All right. You know, I, I got to I gotta get in Go here because the thing in. is, when people write walls of text like this, a lot of times, like I, I'm proud of the fact that I've never finished reading an Elmeca gold post ever. And I just skimmed the shadow. <laughs> I wish I could say the same thing. Well, because like, you know, the thing is, a lot of those guys, especially if I know they want, they're hoping that the Matani man will read the thing and brrr, I just go, because, you know, after a certain point of doing this for more than 15 years, you see one nerd wall of text that's a wall of excuses. You check to see what the rough, rough topics are, and then you sort of go, Pfft. Uh, and move on with your life. And so I hadn't really done too much in the line by line of the dunk thing, but it does get annoying to me because he is hiding behind this. It, it's a fig leaf. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretense. The, the, and I understand he's got to shore up his leadership or whatever. Uh, but we stop nailing yourself up on a fucking cross acting like you prevented brave from flipping sides and joining the Imperium. You were never offered a place in the Imperium because you motherfuckers spent 14 months desperately telling everyone how we are bad human beings and slobbering on Piggles and Villy's knob. And then you dodged any responsibility. And now that you are facing consequences of your action, of course, I'm perfectly happy to continue to deal, do deals like for keep stars and for appropriate above board diplomatic things like fucking adults, but don't act like you were being invited to join the fucking Imperium when you were howling for the blood of our people. That is simply not true. We asked you to get the fuck out of the war, and you did not have the courage to do that. But claiming that you had the courage to stand up to flipping to the Imperium to preserve our reputation, bitch, you weren't invited. Stop fucking claiming that you were. Correct. So we're going to keep going here because there's even more and it just gets funnier from here. So next up, he goes on here and he talks about the leaks. The leaks, which were, by the way, brought to you on the Meta Show. Around this time, the leaks <laughs> happened of command arguing and talking frankly about the situation, which was as revealed, we're fucked. And as a result, a couple things happened, mainly because we stressed that it, I mean, we were the best friends that Brave ever had. It was us highlighting how broke they were and how fucked up things were internally for them that Tess finally was willing to give them a Keepstar and a Satoyo and a Tatara. But then he, he says, well, we had to create this BC piggy bank corporation that only I had roles in uh, because Pappy only trusted me and Brave completely. They wanted no other hands on the buttons of the Keepstar, even the rest of Brave leadership. Who trusted you again? You're worried about trust when you guys can't even get the the other leaders of the coalition to let you in the room until the end of the war. And you're talking about worrying about your 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 relationships and how you're going to be viewed as trustworthy. Guess what? You think anybody thinks NC Dot is less trustworthy at the end of the war after Sinner slipped on them? I haven't heard anything about that. You think anybody trusts Tess now? They didn't trust them before. They don't trust them anymore. If you guys had simply walked away or backed off, you know what would have happened? I will tell you this right now. Nobody would have fucking noticed. <laughs> because you weren't doing anything anyway. At least yeah. not PvP related. And that gets into the next part of this discussion, which to me, Shattered comes in and follows Dunk up with, I guess, because Dunk wrote a wall of text. Shattered has to follow with a wall of text. And his is even more damning to these guys. So let's go, we'll move on now to, to his part in this whole nonsense. So Dunk didn't know is the storyline that we're going with. And I have this highlighted now in this portion of the drama, because he says, from what I can put together, there is argument and frustration in the highest level of Pappy leadership about the war. We weren't in there, so I don't know exactly, but basically the agreement is we're going to do this. We're going to go in and we're going to crack them now. It'll be six weeks. Then that'll be, that was what led to the final push announcement. 
but we weren't in there, so I don't know exactly. He said that a bunch of times. Dunk doesn't know. It's like your archer. Scotty doesn't know. Dunk doesn't know. <laughs> okay? Dunk doesn't know. But guess what? <coughs> Shatter did know. Yeah. Because he puts his thing out and he says, so the leadership shortly prior to my inclusion in this select few this decided select to send few things. Of important people. Exactly. The dads group. That's what they, they literally called themselves the dads. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> so they decided to send things off with a bang, make a final surge in a window queue for all the biscuits where we go crack a system, finally go down swinging. I think everyone here knows how that played out. Yeah, you didn't do it. You ran away. Not a brave thing to do, by the way. But anyway, we'll, let's get there. Sorry, I had to throw the pun in. Here we go. Next up. So, a few days after being invited into the top ch planning channel, remember, remember, Dunk just said, I'm pushing the button a bunch of times. Dunk just said they weren't in these channels, but Charted says they were. Who's in charge of Brave? I don't know. A few days I dropped a question regarding announcing a final push for T3C. This is the this is the infamous 900 million is tangus we told you about on the Meta Show. The T3C stocking only been met with a singular reply: "Wait till tomorrow. There's a decent chance we might call this off." He knew. He knew the war was ending. Brave knew the war was ending. If he didn't tell Dunk, that's on him. But it makes us question: Are who is running Brave or not? I don't know. But that's I, not I, the most unforgivable thing. Oh, okay, let's go. This is the this is the most unforgivable thing. And we have said this before. Mittens just said it. I will say it again. Shattered Armor cares less about Brave than he does his friends and the rest of this group of bull of bullshitters. Because here's what he did. He says, here's the crux of the issue, why we were never able to announce something formally until after the Monday night push. As a coalition, we were keeping our announcements in sync with one another. We'll get to that later. As any group just saying or doing anything preemptively would lead to a panic. So he says, so I waited. I kept quiet and let our industrial machine keep churning, even though I knew it would come at a massive lost stick. Loss for the industrialists and importers that had worked tirelessly pulling a T3C doctrine out of thin air, not to mention seeding enough ships and reships and all the personal caches that pilots had been developing to prepare for the final assault. Any movement Brave made to slow our industrial throughput risk giving away the plan. As much as I hated to do it, I wouldn't allow us to take the fall for Pappy crumbling or starting a panic evac preemptively. Charted thinks he's fucking Winston Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> who couldn't give away Ultra, who couldn't tell everybody that we knew the Enigma plan, so I got to let him bomb London. He thinks he's fucking Winston Churchill. And there's your there's your big red boat World War II reference for the show. That's right. I am, I'm not even kidding here. This guy put the interests of a bunch of chuckle fucks who until that week had not even trusted him and his group with the keys to the big boy toilet over the interests of the guys who had kept his alliance running for a year while we were beating the shit out of them, who moved all the stuff on his orders from catch an impasse to Quirius, and then had to move it out from Quirius to Geminate. He would not tell them, guys, hey, just wait a little bit before we start seeding the T3Cs, okay? Let the other bigger groups go in there and say, or even as Darkshine suggested, Tell them, hey, guys, we're going to get, I expect we're going to get a big influx of like 400 uh, Tengus from the bit from the big guys. So don't worry about building a lot of this stuff. Don't buy anything yet. We'll tell you when to do it right when we're getting ready for the big push. He didn't say a word. He let these guys go out there and spend all their risk. Let their, let their, let their, their industry guys go out there, put all these contracts up, seat all of these ships at ridiculous prices that they will never make back. Because who the fuck needs a T3C fleet of rail tengus in Geminate? <laughs> because he was afraid that if he told them not to, that that was going to leak out. You want to know the real funny thing? Here, guess what? Here's the real funny thing. We already knew! We knew before you did! We knew the war was over before you did. We knew before that even fucking came out because we knew. We had all of this stuff. Every single thing. We had it. The Black Hand had been watching every fucking thing these guys were doing. We already knew. 
So you're worried about tripping us up and letting us know we already knew, dude, sorry. So not only did you fuck up all your guys' income streams, not only did you screw with your own industry people so that you could keep your new buddies happy instead of doing what's in the best interest of your own group, it was for fucking nothing. What the hell is that? One of the things that, you know, there, there's, this is just like, guys, this is just a shit waterfall, right? There's is just a, a bunch of shit flowing down a waterfall of incompetence. And it starts with where we're beginning with the brave stuff, uh, with the dunk thing. And then we're at the, the shardered armor thing. And it's funny uh, because I was curious. Uh, one of the little dramas that came out in all of this, of course, is that it, we're about to get to Pappy Snowden and, you know, spoiler alert is chartered was involved in this as he just admitted in his little thing uh the, the funny thing about this of course is is that in the original brave drama leaks like the brave lea key like brave leaks or whatever that came out months and months ago it was revealed that uh you know dunk was on notice they were all on notice that chartered armor was off doing things and making decisions and chartered armor is the genius who had paid tests genius spy master what was it like 12 billion a quarter or whatever for access to their relay, uh, which is extra funny at the time, because looking back on it, we realized that Test's intelligent network was absolute shit because look where they are and look who they are. Uh, so maybe that's one of the reasons why we have some life today in chat from some of the uh, heroes and tests who are coming to join us because we are shitting on their quizzling and their lick spittle sharded armor. And so the genius test people are going to come to go, ooh, Matani man bad. I actually saw some names I haven't seen in a while. But it's particularly funny to see this. Uh, yeah, you do have feelings uh, for only a little bit of time because test is next and I am under no obligation to do anything nice or kind to you <laughs> it's good i'm glad like nature is healing because we're getting to some spicy drama with some nerds being angry at each other uh, i like it when nerds are angry with each other it's funny we, we are well the nature you, you know the people are playing the game people are playing the video game eve online and they're getting mad at each other and, and wars and fights are happening uh because they're no longer slobbering on elf boy piggles chartered etc as knobs uh so yeah no we have uh we have some opportunities here so let's keep going on though. all right let's, so uh, so i have some of the some of the pappy snowden stuff just just to highlight this <laughs> some of the pappy snowden stuff so we had a pappy snowden leak like two days after dunk's post where he's like we didn't know we didn't know and it starts out and I'll, I'll throw the reddit up on the screen i've got some slides for this too but the slides are about something funnier so we got we have the pappy snowden leak the first in the leak the first thing is sharded talking about the pings of each group announcing when they're leaving okay and then my favorite part my favorite my absolute favorite part is right here when Vince asks, any reason why we started Keepstar on Anchors before we sent out pings? Like, really? <laughs> and ProGuy's like, so I thought I had clever logic, but it turns out this was probably a bad idea. And then Vince is like, fucking Bjorn B already beat us to it, and Matani's already losing his shit about it. He says, well, and this is probably <laughs> dumb now that I think about it, but I thought that if we started the on Anchors during the battle, they wouldn't have an exact time. But if we waited until after the battle, they'd have eyes on. Do you guys think we're not going to see it? Even if you started in the middle of the fight, do you think we're not going to see it? The one thing, the absolute one thing that we proved throughout this entire war is you guys could not piss, hit, jerk off, look at anybody wrong without <laughs> us knowing about it the minute that it happened. <laughs> the Black Hand and all of our intel groups had been out there we had ears and eyes every place you were. It didn't matter how super secret. There was nothing you could hide from us because we saw it all. But they still think they're going to do this. So, And I have to laugh because I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing at poor Piggles because it's like he just, you could tell, you could, just the way he's typing, it's just so bad. So I'm going to throw this scary. up. We're going to. Yeah. We're gonna look at some of the some of these other things that happened that he, and he just fell on his sword like it wasn't even funny. So well, he, here we he, go. Yeah, he, his future was going up in smoke right there. You know, you know it's bad when somebody like Progod actually apologizes. It's like the first time in recorded history that he actually owned a fucking mistake temporarily because he had literally no other choice. Right. 
So we got we got Pappy so Piggle Piggles fucks up. Did I do that? And so Vince is like, I'm done leading my guys on for you to just change this fucking goalpost because you think it's a good idea. And Piggles is like, that wasn't me changing the goalpost. It was me with an idea that I'll admit probably wasn't a good one. That's like 30 minutes before. Yeah, it wasn't a good one, dude. You just highlighted that everybody was leaving. And then Vince is like, he doesn't want to hear it. He's just like, send your pings before we look even more fucking stupid. That is, that is probably the most Vince line I've seen in a long time. That is straight up. That's Vince. So the pro guy's like, guys, I apologize. It was not my intention. It was an offhand idea during the battle that I thought was clever. I, it was not my intention to break the news early. And then everybody else comes in. So headliner comes in like, what happened? I was working. And then J Johnny from Horde's like, he started on anchoring keeps pre-announcement. So headliner, headliner, it doesn't even phase him. He's just like, is Horde doing their pings now? And Vince is like, Gobbins is on ice. So I guess, I don't know. And the pro guy's like, yes, this is my fault, but I promise you, I swear to God, I didn't think that it would cause this problem, and I didn't think it through. I was doing multiple things at once. I just, sure, go for it. It was my, my intention to cause this issue. I was doing multiple things at once. The dog ate my homework. I swear it was an act of God. I swear to God. He's on his and knees. He, and he said, sure, like go for it, even like, though it was a clever logic that he came up with, and now he told somebody else to do it. It's the fucking narcissist's prayer. It wasn't wrong. If it was wrong, it was somebody else's idea. I didn't do that, and I wanted to do something exactly. You know, whatever. Insert excuses here. Exactly what, what, right. What an idiot. Exactly right. And I mean, that's that. I, I love. <laughs> I absolutely love. Absolutely love Sirhan's uh, WKRP reference. As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. That was, and if you're of a certain age, you get that reference. That is, that is exactly what Pickles did here, and it's, it's just the most hilarious thing ever. Because these are these are the guys who will proclaim louder to the rest of the world that they know everything there is to know about EVE Online and everything there is to know about strategy and tactics and everything else. And if you just let them do their thing, they'll win the war in 16 minutes with enough time for a beer break and a bong rip, and you will win. And then they do stupid shit like this that any 10-year-old would have said, oh, yeah, by the way, everybody's paying attention to all this stuff now. If you want to anchor those things early, it's might as well, you know, be telling the world that you're leaving. But they did that. Now, Pickles fucks up. What are the consequences? Nothing. He's still here. Vince and those guys, they fuck up. What are the consequences? Nothing. They're still here. Dunk, he got promoted in the middle of the war. Sharded, I guess, is the military director now of, of, of Brave. There was another kerfluffle this week that I don't want to get too much into because it seems like small potatoes compared to the top guys fighting with each other and not being able to run things. But you had Carmen, jo not Carmen, jo you had Kel Drosto. I, I, all right. So I'm sorry, Kel. I am so fucking sorry. I just compared you to Carmen gel. That is not fair at all to you. <laughs> I am sorry. I, that was a brain fart. Cause I, I were going, I was getting ready for the next thing where I'm going to talk about Carmen gel. I apologize for that. Please, please don't hold that against me. I'm sorry, dude. Anyway, you've got the number two guy underneath Sharded wanting to kick Kel. I don't know for being competent, I guess, because Kel's like the only FC they got that doesn't suck. And you've got the HR guy in Brave saying, no, you can't do that. And it turns into this big giant food fight that Dunk basically has to come home. And I feel bad for the guy because it's like Dunk comes home. He wants to come home. He wants to get a drink and play with his bees. And instead, what does he have to do? He has to clean up the mess from a bunch of crybabies arguing over nothing. And I feel bad for him. But none of these guys, none of these guys, have there been any consequences to them personally, except one. And that's the second news. This is the NullSec Power Hour. I'm going to move that to that right now. The biggest news of the day, and this happened a couple days ago, but nobody picked it up, and that is... Billy is retiring. Womp. In what is an amazing turn of events, the only person that seems to at least be willing to accept any kind of blame for this giant fuck up that was the Vietnam War is our dear friend Billy. 
who has announced that he is retiring as military director of TEST, effective a couple days ago. And not only is he retiring, he can't just retire himself. It requires like four people stepping up to be military director to replace him. So the job that Billy was doing before now will be done by Pro God, Sandrin, Carmen Gell, God help you all, and Radomir. Those four guys are going to be taking over the job that Billy is doing. I, I, I didn't know who the four, like I, I knew that, that Billy was saying he's out, but I, I didn't know that those four were going to be taking up the amazing position of, of you know, Billy was so good right. at doing it that those four geniuses, oh, wow, wow, right. okay. Right. So Billy put out put out a statement, and I think there are some some things in here, and I just I, we want to go he's through just, with he's it. He's just honor tanking. Like his his whole thing is is that yes. he's gonna he's taking the classic line of like, oh, I said and I did a whole bunch of dumb stupid shit. Like when I when I went on uh, Trash Talk Tuesday, like the right after we had owned all of those nerds, uh, Billy was trying to do some sort of hey Matani like good fight like thing, and you know. In public right now, he's doing the honor, honor thing. It's kind of like Dunk is doing the honor, honor, like, ooh, I was told to flip and I would never flip. And Billy is like, oh, you know, I've got to spend time. You know, if he wants to spend time in real life, whatever. But the reality is, is that he wants to be given a pass. And that's fine. Billy will either play the game or not play the game, and he can do and say whatever the fuck he wants. Uh, but I, I want people to understand that when Billy is going out of his way to behave in a overtly internet honorable samurai kind of way, it's because he knows it's the only way to possibly salvage his reputation. And it's an attempt to make sure that we look bad by throwing shit at him as he runs away from the consequences of his actions. Um, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I hope he sticks around. I hope he comes back because, it would, you know, I do want to enjoy uh, mocking him for being Mr. Fourth Place for the rest of his time in EVE Online. Uh, he can eat shit. And uh, we in the Imperium don't need to make nice nice to people that howled for the blood of our people for 14 months just because we have won and you have admitted it partially doesn't mean that suddenly it's oh everything is fine now we're gonna we're gonna you know oh you're just gonna go back to normal no uh uh um on the on the villa thing i actually did have a note of broader consequences that came from an unexpected place can i can i riff on this because uh, there go was ahead one and riff. i have this yeah. i have the villa stuff we'll read it to you guys after we're done riffing. okay uh the, very, very quickly here guys uh one of the things that was really interesting in seeing the the leaks from brave originally in the war and then the pappy snowden stuff about the their high command the unsorted channel saying whatever uh i of course am pappy snowden as was said before matter all called it unfortunately matter all <laughs> is also i guess like villa is going to be spending time elsewhere and so I, i'm gonna have to explain that joke instead of pointing and giggling about it anymore alas that was one of my favorites um but the reason why i mentioned Matterall is this actually came out of nowhere so a lot of times i will i will be uh eating sandwiches at three in the morning uh in how i met your mother style and uh in my recliner watching youtube on my big tv uh, which is not all that big but i'm you know I'm, I'm out there i'm doing my thing and on my youtube algorithm occasionally talking and stations will come up because i've got a whole youtube thing and uh i just randomly tuned in to see an episode i think it was from september 4th or whatever it's right after ermalin fell and because Matterall is running from consequences in the same way that Vili is running from consequences, and I'm sure he'll be very offended when, oh, I'm doing it for real life. How dare he impugn my honor? Uh, but, you know, uh, it was an interesting show because you had to go about tw fast forward like 20 minutes into it. And somebody can find the link here and drop it in chat uh, before uh, this dude whose name is like Rundle All Nighter, who's like a big podcast guy. It was a, an episode with Rundle All Nighter and uh, Dominar from The Bastion. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, what was really interesting to me about it is he actually really tells us what he actually unburdens himself. Like Rundle actually goes into what it is like to have been a full blown pappy Kool Aid drinker, right? And he is open about it because, you know, it, it had been like a month since he talked about it and he came back and he was basically like, uh, well, shit, like we lost all of our stuff. And so over the course of this episode, he sort of uh, goes, it, it was sort of a therapeutic like catharsis thing. And it was fascinating because one of the, the, the biggest dichotomies here in the Pappy situation is the leadership avoids consequences because they have chosen to follow a whole bunch of people with personality disorders. Like there's a lot of fucking narcissists over there. Uh, and the leaders, of course, 
the evidence from the Pappy Snowden thing made it very clear that the bad guys knew that they were going to be running while they were telling their guys to buy Tingus and get ready to fight. Uh, and their leaders being their leaders made sure that they were avoiding consequences. But the, what the Rundle thing was interesting was not so much that it was surprising. In fact, one of the things that is a recurring theme of our coverage of the Vietnam War here on the Meta Show for the past more than a year is the fact that uh, the line members are left completely in the dark and the line members are buying into it. And Rundle kind of confirmed a lot of what we had been saying about how they legitimately believed that we were gone. They, honest to God, believed everything that the sharded armors of the, the game were telling them. And they wanted to believe, and their belief was genuine, uh, which is something that, again, we said it on the show. Uh, but the, the effect of that is when we said these guys have given up everything that they have, and first they moved into Delve by abandoning their stuff in the galactic southeast, and then all that got burned down. And then uh, this dude, and I imagine there's a bunch of these people because we've seen them logging on and getting caught in asset safety related traps is, you know, people cleared their schedules, people cleared their honest to God schedules. This was the thing that seemed really tragic to me about the Rundle situation, because he's been fighting us for 15 years, but you know, it's not like the dude sucks or anything. It was like, he honestly, like he's big on loyalty, a bunch of humans are big on loyalty. That's a very common thing. They're like, I'm, you know, people might be wrong, but I'm loyal. And this is, this is what I do. And that loyalty was leveraged by people like Sharded Armor to convince these people in the Pappy line that they should take a week or two off of work because they are going to finally have that final battle. They promised them that they were going to have what they wanted and they they committed to it. And then these guys, uh, like particularly in Rundle's case, like, oh, hey, you took time off work and you got ready for the, this big battle and now you're moving all your shit and you and all your friends lost everything they have because you believed in these fucking idiots. And on the one hand, I, I w I, I'm not sympathetic. I, 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 understand, I understand what took place, but I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I'm full of sympathy. It, it's an unfortunate situation. I hope that some of these people learn their fucking lesson next time that some dumbass like Villy or Sharded Armor uh, or Piggles or Elf Boy tells you that they know what they're fucking doing. But I also understand human nature, and I understand that the puppies will come after us again in five years, which is why the Imperium is becoming the fucking crisis and instead of like, resting on our fucking laurels and making sure of that. But I just want to say in terms of consequences, there is evidence independent because, ooh, Brisk and, and the Matani are always spinning or whatever, but there's evidence from people who were the, the big public media figures from Pappy admitting all of the things that we told you were true. They did move all their crap in. They were completely blindsided. They drank the Kool-Aid. They lost, in some cases, everything that they fucking had because they didn't necessarily have the liquid isk to be able to handle the asset safety. And it is the fault of their leaders. Their leaders told them to prepare for the big fight. They did. Some of these people took time off fucking work and they got screwed. And we're going to remind everybody about this because the next time that elf boy, the next time that piggles, the next time that Villy, the next time that sharded armor, the next time any of these dumb hypocritical motherfuckers, wants to respectability tank and act like that whole war thing and them screwing over their line members didn't actually happen. Well, I'm sorry, my friends, that is never, ever, 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 ever going away. We are never going to allow any y'all to forget it. And anybody that never follows you at that point, the war criminals. Yeah. Never, no mercy, no, no fucking mercy. And, and, you know, that's just a, a normal that a lot of these guys are having to adjust to like these dumbasses and tests who thought that they could go after Dunk Dinkle. Like I said at the start of the show, I have some criticisms of Dunk saying that we asked him to flip and we didn't. But when they, when the test dumbasses suddenly popped up on Reddit or were like, oh, you know, Dunk is a bad guy for doing a deal with the Imperium, but you screwed over all your members, their whole asses were hanging out. And those dumbasses think that they can actually try to run a smear campaign on someone. Like, I will shit talk Dunk, Dunk Dinkle when he fucks up, like I did. It wasn't really shit talk. It was more like, please stop saying we asked you to flip. But you know what I mean? I'll, I'll fucking throw some punches when need be. But these dumbasses in test in Outer Passage think that the galaxy has forgotten that they are responsible for all of the misery and suffering and shittiness that their own side experienced. We are not going to allow test to act like, oh, well, we're just test now and it's fine. We're going to be dunking these nerds. 
test is next until we get bored of test. And I'm sorry, darlings, you don't get to decide how you're next. We're just going to, we're just going to, we're going to poke at you. We're going to poke at you until we get bored. We'll have to see how long that is. I don't know. I, I, I love, I love fucking with puppies. I don't like it. I don't like puppies and tests. So, uh, but yeah, and the dumbasses. All right. That was my long distraction from that the was one good, little thing to the, the fuck You should put thing. you on your soapbox for that. There Here is go. the deal. Okay. On the, on the GE tech thing, the idea that Brave should not have sold us that Keepstar is absurd. Because you know what would have happened if Brave hadn't sold us that Keepstar? We would have let it go abandoned, and then we would have taken all the stuff out of it, and then they would have gotten in trouble. They would have lost a ton of stuff for their members. Because we know how to do that. And the fact that they sold it to us with the express guarantee that we would not let it go abandoned so that we could take all the stuff out of it. That was the best possible deal that Dunk could have struck. And it's the only deal he could have struck that made any sense for his members. And it's probably only a deal that Dunk could have struck. Cause if anybody else had asked that from us, we probably would have given them the finger and left them out of the, out of the place. And the thing is test has no room to talk because they fucking sold a structure that was a stager for Dazar that we did let go abandoned and then blew up and took all the loot from. So there, if anybody in test is giving Brave a hard time for what they did, come on. I mean, you guys did way worse. But that let, we're getting a little bit far afield. I want to give Billy his his day Back here. And we're going to show. Let's do it. We're going to let him. Re, in his words, his retirement from military director. So he says, and here we have a nice picture of Billy walking into the sunset. And the good thing is, it doesn't show his face because we know he hates that. As many of you may have noticed over the course of the last couple months, I have stepped back from Eve in a variety of ways. Unable to meet the demanding time requirements of Alliant leadership, my goal has been above all to avoid impeding the growth and operation of others while not fully connected to the day-to-day -day operations of the Alliance. All right, so we know you've been gone six months. We haven't seen you. The only time we see you is on Trash Talk Tuesday. That, that was it. There have been a continuity of events that led me to the decision. That's not what continuity means, but we'll give you a pass because you're resigning to their decision to resign from my role as military director within Tappy. For new blood to grow and succeed, it often requires open fields. Floodplains. This is like a mixed metaphor. I, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I mean, I know. I definitely know what it needs for these guys. It needs a lot of fucking fertilizer because they keep laying it on real thick. But. I endeavor to enable the great new leaders of Eve and Tappy to develop and flourish. Um, Carmen Gel is the next generation of great new leaders. Dude, I, I, I'm sorry. Pickles. This guy is just a fucking cut rate wish.com DB preacher. Like one of the reasons why reading this thing is so obnoxious is that he's, he's just standing on ceremony. He even like, he does these like fucking role playing. Like, you know, if you guys old school guys remember DB preacher, like 14th rank short Tonto DBP, like, you know, it's, it's, it's the, the, this is, this is the same level of, uh, He's the guy in the D&D &D group that makes you feel embarrassed for liking D&D. &D. He's that fucking nerd. He's that fucking nerd that names his titan the champion, champion's jewel and the, the, the forge of heroes and the power, power of, legends. of legends. And then he's writing this long honor tank, you know, one royal fleet corps bullshit. And, you know, great. Like, the thing is, is that when people say that they're going to quit this game or they say that they're going to resign, I don't I don't believe it. Like, I, I think that Vili is going to be with us for years. And if he isn't, then whatever. Uh, yeah. But because I'm not Vili, because I am not Vili, I am not going to cheer the idea of him leaving the game. Because unlike Vili, who declared a war of extermination and said that I should be forced to quit the game and that my people should not follow me and that the Imperium should not be friends with each other. This motherfucker thinks that he gets to stand on ceremony. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You can try to say it on ceremony, but we're still going to throw you and uh, throw shit at you and all of your friends and anybody who salutes to your fucking flag of uh, cowardice and incompetence. Uh, now so, let's be, yeah. Let me be clear. Now let me be clear. He's retiring as military director. As far as we know, he's not leaving the game. He's not leaving the CSM. And that's good because I don't. We, we don't want him to leave. With enemies like him, I mean, that's how, how that's the best thing we could possibly have. He'll be back. He'll be back. Right? And that's the thing. Guys like that, when they get to that level, when they've got a taste for having their name in the history books, 
They're not going anywhere. He'll be back. He'll he'll repackage himself. Why he'll, isn't he'll leave and create a new group or do something else? It's it's just going to happen. But he's resigning. So here we go. Next up, and this is this 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 just it just makes me laugh. Oh my god! And, so and we're going to get words. there's two one more after this. But my goals within Tappy have always been to create and maintain an atmosphere of fun and challenge. Guys, what did you have fun? Were you challenged? I hope. We embraced the all-in approach and took risks that nobody else in the galaxy would take. No, you fucking didn't. Oh, no. No, you didn't. Oh, no. Risks, you took a risk like that blowing, everyone blowing, in the galaxy would take. 103 alliances so they wouldn't have to take risks. You didn't take a risk. They didn't take a fucking risk. They made Serenity, and they nearly fucked the game into not being a game anymore because the PCU crisis was the leadership of Pappy's fault. The moment that the blue donut started cracking, suddenly you got 5,000 more people playing the video game EVE Online. This is more responsibility dodging, which is exactly on brand for Mr. All Fourth Place. All in. All in. You know what all in means? Here's what all in means. All in means that is you put your all your chips in, and if you lose, you have nothing. Was there ever a situation where they put all their chips in at any event, even M2? No. Isn't he the guy that came up with the jammer strategy of let's bore the entire player base to death such that they don't really play EVE Online and then lose all of your super caps anyway? That's it. Oh, wait, that's right. Vili was the guy who, like, you know, if Vince had been in charge of the war from day one for real, we would have been in a very different place. And I've made that, I that cannot, very clear from the beginning. But, you know, I cannot for, for some the life reason, of me. I cannot for the life of me, for exactly what you just said, understand how in his own mind he has got it in his head that what he did was risky and that they did something that nobody else would do. Trust me, you give us two-thirds of the game, we will crush anyone else. It's not a risk when you have three times the numbers. It's not a risk when you say you're going all in and you don't. That's like me saying... I'm all in and then pushing in three chips and having the dealer look at me like, that's not what that means, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's as, keep going. As, as, let, me, let, me, let me get one here thing. Kunmi has popped up with something that I, I think deserves being pointed out here. You know what was risky? You know what was actually risky? And how? Staying in 1DQ1. Yes, Staying that is in 1DQ1 absolutely correct. And fighting right. while the entire galaxy was sitting there insisting that the floodplains were somehow goonie spin and all that shit. Actual risk shoving everything you have in over and over and over again. That's what we did because that's what you have to do to actually win when you're fighting all of the fucking dumbass puppies in the galaxy all at once for 14 fucking months. Actual risk actually shoving everybody's assets in watching your golden bridge retreat get destroyed and say good now we fight right that is what real risk looks like bluing 103 fucking puppies every tom dick and harry alliance when in previous battles and previous wars and previous hell wars never had anyone actually been such a pathetic weak coward as to form the honest to god blue donut and villy was personally responsible. There were a few other people who were also involved in that, but in many cases, most of the cowardly bullshit strategies and the fact that it took so long is Villy's personal individual fault. And I know that because we had our hand up their asses the entire time and you could see the the battles and the infighting between the Panfam guys that wanted to be more aggressive and Villy and uh, Elfboy who were fine with a, a calm schedule, I guess. So whatever, fuck them, fuck them. Ridiculous. Yep. And I mean, it, it's like, you want to talk about all in. You want, you want to see all in, I'll show you if I can pull this up and make it look right. Here's all in for you guys. Look at that Delve trade balance number. In July. Oh, shit. That's One right. Point I forgot four about this. trillion isk yanked out before the war ended. So that's 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 July, right? Is that's that July. It, that is the July, July MER. MER. 1.5 trillion of exports. Or is they that were 1. pulling 5 their shit out? More than a trillion, isn't it? That's a, that I know that's a big number of billions. One point four two one three billion is so fourteen hundred billion is one point four trillion. That's what it is. That's that was and that's that was exported from Delve. We weren't pulling anything out. We were bringing shit in. Oh, because that's net that's net export. So our importation, our importation and the importation yes. of their side preparing for the final battle. Net. 
still managed a net export over what we were importing to uh wow it's ridiculous well, they're a bunch of dumb pieces of shit and if you like i'm it. sorry I, i'm sorry i that's just don't have any sympathy were. you guys followed these fuckers for 14 months you get what you get you begged for this you asked for this this is what you wanted you chose poor leaders you clapped for poor leaders we told you the truth the entire time but you insisted oh goons bad oh brisk bad mitani man bad da, 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 da. and now you're fucked and you asked for it so whatever right. eat shit you guys called me Baghdad Bob because I said you wouldn't ref 70 fucking iHubs in a day, and then you did it. You guys lied for 13 months, and we told everybody you were, and you're acting like, now Now you got Billy out here being Mr. Nice Guy. Oh, hey, good job. Good game, everybody. Sorry it didn't work out the way we wanted to. We went all in, but it didn't work. Here's the rest of his, here's the rest of his stuff, and then we'll be done. So with our last all-in being a lost hand, it wasn't all-in again. My goal would be to take the blame with me and open a cleaner field for others to succeed on the next hand. He's taking the blame with him. He's going to have to fight for dunk for space, uh, fight with dunk for space up on that fucking cross, isn't he? Though? There's so, I mean, there's like so the, many, so Billy, many fucking thank puppies you going, for oh. taking away the sins of New Eden. A up on your cross of dead, of dead Titans. And then he finally ends it with, you've given me your trust and time, and I'm forever grateful for it. When M2 broke me, broke him. Oh, poor baby, broke him. poor baby, poor baby. Not the guys that lost all their shit, but him. It was many of you who picked me up and carried me along. That was a truly a sign of where Test was and is. You are and have been the greatest force anyone could ever ask to lead. Another lie, because the answer to that question is the Imperium. The, the other thing is, imagine calling Test which is broadly considered to be now, like, you know, even when Pappy was fighting alongside Tess, they would, the, the, the non-Test guys would admit uh, very readily that everybody hated Tess and they couldn't stand them. Uh, I'm going to repeat something I've said all war, which is that Test is the fucking bile duct of Nullsec. Test is the alliance where you can be allowed to be a shitbag because Test is where everyone who has been blacklisted from PanFam and from the Imperium ends up it is the place of last resort for the bad posters backstabbers bitches fuck ups and uh you know general assets like you know der her der coming out of retirement to try to shit on dunk as if we had all just forgotten all of his inward spam that happened when he popped up in the early war and der her der is like ooh, how dare asher elias say that goons are good and i'm der her der and look at what an awful fucking human being i am and then he gets dunked six ways from sunday and then pops up months later thinking that it's safe for him to take to the skies against dunk fucking dinkle who is a good Mr. Man, nice guy a, yeah a man who i would be delighted you know I, I gotta i gotta do some space threatening and like you know there's no like politics happening here but like dunk dinkle is a cool fucking dude and if you think if you're sitting around and you're going wow der her der uh i'm gonna take his side and the test guy's side over over dunk whatever criticisms i may have about the leadership of brave newbies or whatever but it was just the amazing thing about the test guys is they can't help themselves. They might be the scapegoat of Eve online right now, uh, but they literally like earlier in the chat here for the first time in a while, we actually saw some live honest to God test nerds here in chat thinking that they could throw punches at this meta that they could actually throw stones. And I, I appreciate like, that. Yeah, I want, you I want guys to see, come here come and on, throw absolutely. stuff at brave. Come on. <laughs> We're allowed to throw is, stuff at brave. So, so, so like, it's just, they, they don't, they don't get it. They, they don't understand that this is a new galaxy uh, and that we are not, you know, it's not going to be like after the fountain war where it's like, Oh, six VDT, you know, whatever, where we're leave well enough alone. Cause we learned that lesson. We left test Alliance to do their own thing and let bygones be bygones and whatever. And they got new leadership under Villy. And what happened five years, six years after the fountain war, uh, they came at us in the NBC and then it was like, Oh, casino war. Okay. Well, we've got to deal with this now. And I guess it was only like three, three and a half years, but we learned our lesson. We know Test is hostile. We know that they're the fucking bile duck of Nullsec, bile duct of Nullsec. And um, yeah, I mean, whatever. We'll have to see what happens. I, I, I do enjoy every time I make threatening noises about Test uh, that there are Test people that will pop up and go, oh, you aren't doing anything. Bring it, Matani, bring it, because it riles my guys up and then gives us something to do. Uh, so, uh, Spod bless. 
unlike Test, when we decide to go and fuck with you, you will not know about it ahead of time. That's that's the difference. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of the show. You guys got an extra six minutes oh, from wow. us because we missed last week, and we're sorry about that. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Brave has a lot of leadership challenges ahead. We understand that. And if you wonder why we keep talking about them, guys, they are the fifth largest alliance in EVE Online. Now, yes, that's on paper. But these guys are well known. They've been around a long time. They were number two in Legacy. Legacy no longer exists as far as I can tell. So Brave is going to be looking for friends. They're going to, they're living on, on a couch, on Horde's couch in Geminate, but they're not blue to Horde anymore. So at some point, I feel like these guys are going to have to find a place that they can defend that's that's going to be for them. And we'll see where that is. And I doubt very sincerely that it's going to be Geminate. So we're going to talk about Brave when it makes sense to talk about Brave. Billy. Billy is is taking all of his sins upon his head and marching off into the sunset. Will we see him again? Of course. When, where, we don't know. Probably on a talk show. We'll find out. But at the very least, we all know that it's taking four people to replace him, and we wanted to bring that news to you guys. We had Pappy Snowden leaks this week. Today's 9-11. We're remembering Vile Rat. We've had a lot of stuff this week. Hopefully next week we'll have some more fun news for you guys. We're still getting, we're still work. I'm still working on my documentary. We're still talking about the war because it's fresh and we're still learning things that we didn't know or that weren't clear. And as we get more stuff, we're going to do that. We've got CCP stuff to talk about next week. We've got all kinds of stuff coming and maybe there'll be news this week. Who knows? So at least for me, boss, you got anything to leave us with? Um, one other thing, I got a little diplomatic note here real quick. Uh, I want people, this is big picture stuff. We are uh, monitoring who becomes friends with Test. Uh, we do understand that Fire Coalition has been acting like maybe they would like to fly with Test and do things with Test. I just want to put a, a marker here on the fucking table that uh, whoever wants to be friends with Test is automatically the blood enemy of the fucking Imperium. And do that, we will guys. never fucking idea. forget. And we'll never forgive. So make of that what you will. Maybe it doesn't mean anything because all the fucking test people are like, oh, you know, no big deal, whatever. But you guys have seen what happens when you follow test off of a cliff now. And if people want to keep doing it, well, we will keep delivering examples until uh, we get bored of it. Uh, but yeah, I just want, I just want to make it very clear explicitly. It's not just that like test is next and we're going to, we're going to teleport up to outer passage and shit on these guys. But uh, anybody that wants to go like, oh yeah, test are good people. Let's hang out with them and, and give them a place in the, the, the greater, whatever. Like, we're not going to eliminate test. We're not going to try to exterminate test, but we are going to drop what we're doing and shit on them and shit on anybody that says that tests are cool and good because it's fun for us and they deserve it. So that's just a formal cards on the table. Whoever's like, yeah, I want to hang out with test and give them space and be friends with them is just automatically on our shit list. Whoever is friends with test is on our shit list. And just there remember, it took 15 years for NC dot and the remnants of Bob to get off our shit list. You can imagine how long it's going to take for test to do that. <laughs> All right. So last couple things, if you guys didn't see chill back, our dear friend Chillback wrote a very long post on Reddit. Uh, he's out there. He's fighting cancer. We love you, dude. Keep fighting. We're Stay here for you. hundred percent. Stay strong. Uh, I've been asked to remind everyone that Karma Fleet is recruiting and AMOC is recruiting. So if you guys are interested in joining the Imperium, there are at least two groups that are recruiting. And the best person to ask about joining those groups is, please, God, not me. <laughs> Anyone but me. Okay? Just remember that. All right. I'm Brisk Group All. This has been the Matani and the Meta Show for the week of September the 11th, 2021. Everybody, have a good rest of your weekend, and you stay classy. New Eden.